Greetings, and today I have another Gwent deck video for you guys. So I just want to say a couple of things before I get started with the actual deck guide. Um, I just want to say first that um, I am streaming on Twitch in a regular schedule. Like I have finally been able to set a reg regular schedule for myself. Uh, if you guys want to know what that is, hop on over to my Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash enzo1place. Um, if you guys want to check me out and follow me and watch me stream watch me play games like Gwent and I'm gonna start adding some like you know variety type of games just because you know I just want to have fun a fun time talking to you guys just chatting about anything and everything really uh, I know Last of Us Part 2 is coming out I believe in two days so I'm definitely gonna be streaming that at some point Final Fantasy 7 Remake is something I also want to get around because I'm a big fan of the Final Fantasy series so I definitely want to get going with that one as well um, my classes are about to end I think in about a few weeks time my classes will be over so I should be able to get on to a good consistent streaming groove by the time summer comes around uh so i'll be more active on twitch twitter youtube so make sure you guys follow me on all those sites and of course join my discord if you haven't already uh so that's just about um about the cliff notes of what's up to come what's coming up and um as you guys can tell i haven't really been uploading too often up until this week now where i'm finally starting to a bit of monsters gameplay so uh here we go Going straight into the deck, we have another version of Fruits. I know you guys must get tired of me playing Fruits. I like I, if you guys have been to my streams, I've been I've been telling it time and time again. The Fruits of Iskith is honestly just it's just my ability. It's my favorite ability to play, and um, in my opinion, this might actually be the most optimized Fruits deck I have actually created. And um, I actually took this deck to pro rank. Um, obviously, by the time I this video gets uploaded, or actually by the time that the gameplay got recorded, I was already in the pro rank, but I took this deck straight to pro rank and I just kept going. Um, one of the things I corrected with the Fruits of Iskith was the fact that I undervalued Caretaker way too much. I actually should have valued him exactly for what he's worth. He's a very strong card that can proc thrive, not to mention he can actually deny pure, uh, sorry, he can deny status with purify. Um, so we actually, he's, he's sort of a poison magnet, if that makes sense, because if, let's say, one of our big units gets poisoned against, like, you know, from a Squiretel deck or from a poison Nilfgaard deck, we throw in a Caretaker to get rid of that poison, uh, and our opponent's gonna want to end up using two more poisons just for the Caretaker, and that's two less poisons for them to use against some of my even bigger units, so I like the Caretaker because it can proc thrive, and it is a status magnet. Uh, so that's the good thing about having the Caretaker in this deck like i said i did undervalue him um which is why i haven't really used him at all since he got changed from the artifact res up until this point at least not used them in like a sufficient way and i find that this is the most efficient way i can use him so far you know like i think we might find better uses for him later maybe after the master mirror comes out if he doesn't get changed i guess we'll see um and honestly i'm saying that because of all the statuses that are coming with it like doom this is a good one i believe rupture is gonna be a status as well Veil vale will be a status as well, so you know there is that. So we can all we can actually start using caretaker as an offensive weapon too, not just as a defensive weapon. But anyway, um, enough rubbing caretakers behind. Uh, sorry, stop kissing caretakers behind. I should say. Let's go on to the rest of the deck because there's 25 cards in a deck, not one. Uh, so I'm gonna start off here with Weavis Incantation. Honestly, Weavis Incantation is good for allowing us to have that extra draw. The only thing is, you want to play, you don't want to play Weavis Incantation sort of as your second to last or even your last card just because sometimes the card you could end up drawing could be a really bad one that could hinder you to be honest um you want to put you want to play weavis incantation to a point where you are put in a really um good position plus draw a card that can potentially help you in the second or third round because it is deck thin we should actually use the deck thin you know aside from being a game finisher in round three and weavis incantation is also good if you actually use it to eat the egern it's good to set up the osril as well so weavis kind of does that double duty for you and that's honestly something that you want so that's why weavis incantation i decided to keep i believe in my last reincarnation of fruits i had poet because i thought poet would be pretty good at being able to do that double uh, the double proc of the Thrive, but, you know, I found it just a bit too expensive, and I made room for other cards as well. Anyway, one of the other changes I made was Royal Decree. Now, I went, I changed Poet to Weavis, and I inc I upgraded Naglfar to Royal Decree. And honestly, when I say I, is, I upgraded it, it is kind of an upgrade. Um, the one thing that Royal Decree doesn't do is, 
uh, tutor the necromancy or the parasite so those cards I must draw uh, but I think that's an okay sort of consequence when you're be when you're guaranteed to bring out something that you might actually need like for example if you don't have Oswald in your deck and you absolutely want him to come out then you know that's definitely an option same with Mata same with caretaker same with Doregare if you absolutely need him and etc you just want that consistency I think and if you have to give up uh, being being able to tutor special cards, then you know what? So be it. You know, it's not the worst. So that's why I have Royal Decree. Uh, Egrin's pretty straightforward. Pretty tall unit. Again, we can use it to be eaten by Weavis. That way we don't have to worry about the uh, Egrin's armor being taken out and, you know, losing all that power for no reason. Better to play the Weavis and maybe lure out the Morkvarg or the Baron, you know, if they have it, of course. And yeah. So that's why we have Egrin, Caretaker. We've, again, we've done enough ass kissing on caretaker so we're gonna leave it out of there uh next we got katakan which of course is the strongest thrive unit we gotta have him in there just gotta uh mata of course we still need to guarantee draw on the weavis or the eager really depends because Burrow the creek can only really tutor one card so honestly you could even make a case for even getting rid of mata and let's say putting in let's say like a proto flutter or something uh just simply because royal decree thins and weavis thins so you actually have two cards that can thin very well here um, but I mean, it's your choice to see how much more consistent you get. You do have a lot of high provision cards that are going to be really useful. So maybe it's good to keep Mata, but hey, that's your decision. But I just choose to keep it. Next, we got Ozzy, of course. It's our finisher. Again, if they've used up their reset or their tall punish with Weavis, and that means Oswald should relatively have a safe um, placement onto the field. Now, of course, you will come across Second Wind, where perhaps they may play their Morkvarg from it to combine with like either Dagur or a Great Sword, and then just paying Osro for a bunch of points. But I mean, that's a predictable play, which you can try to get around, honestly. Like if you can somehow get rid of Defender, which I don't think I've found a I've inserted a card. Oh no, I do. I have I have Caretaker. I can use you can use Caretaker to get rid of Defender, and then perhaps a Drowner to move Dagur. So I mean, you do have options as well. Um, anyway, moving on, we got Goyat, second strongest card in our deck. We gotta have that sort of backup plan in case Egrin's, um, Egrin gets banished or gets yoinked by a Yennefer's Invo. You know, you get the deal. Um, moving on, we got Necromancy, of course. We want that third Indriga Larva, as per always, because, again, I love my Indriga Larvas. I don't know why opponent, my opponents don't love the Indriga Larva, but I do. So, you know what? Screw it. Next, we got Deregare. It's one of our tech cards in the deck. Um, being able to lock a unit, even though it's only one lock, so you know you might find it valuable. But honestly, you can de deny a lot of points with Deregare, so it might not be the worst to actually get him going. Hawk a ho lock a Hawker Smuggler, you know, lock a Necrat, lock a Corsair, lock a ship, whatever you need to lock. You know, not so bad. It's always good to have that uh, that choice, that option to be able to lock something. Next, next, we got Parasite, which can be used both as a defensive or as an offensive weapon. Just be warned, this obviously won't proc Thrive, so you gotta be careful about when you use it. If you absolutely need that Thrive support, you may not want to have Parasite in your hand because it will not contribute to the Thrive. But it will contribute in being able to remove a pretty decent engine. Like, for example, if they have Gremist and you want to play Deregare on something, use the Parasite to get rid of the Gremist. You know, it's all good and fun right there. Moving on, we got the Alpha Werewolf. Again, I don't know why I've fallen in love with the Alpha Werewolf since it went from 4 to 5. And, you know, Thriving Immunity, you can't go wrong with that. Next, I added in a Ghoul because we have two Griffins here. And we need something to just, you know, chomp up on those Griffins and get all those points. So we have Ghoul. Weaker version of Osroll, of course. But you know what? It is still a card that can be useful. Uh, of course, we are we could use end up, we could end up using Griffins to eat the fruits of Iskith or the Ekamara spawned by the Katakan because that also allows us to actually proc the Thrive on the Katakan itself, which is an extra power, and that can be really valuable. Flutter, so we actually have three cards here that can kill fruits, so, you know, you don't want to have all three, of course, in the same hand, because you don't want to spend your first three turns eating fruits, and then starting with your Andrega Larva setup. Um, I'm okay with probably one or even two at the max, but I wouldn't have all three. You want to save one for, like, a, a short round, um, so you want preferably want a Griffin in the Graveyard by round three, of course, to trigger the Ghoul, but apart from that, again, one or two is good. You don't want all three. Drowner is the uh, Drowner is an interesting card actually here in this case because Drowner is a good tech card, but the thing is, some some people like if, if we're taking on Nilfgaard, that's where Drowner can kind of get awkward because if you're really hell bent on trying to um, 
move an elder bear, like moving Stefan or moving uh, Damien to the other side. They sometimes play them second to last. And that kind of makes the awkward for Drowner because Drowner kind of just becomes a two point card. It does deny an additional 13 points though if you are if you are playing against formation with Elder Bear. So Drowner, it can deny all those points, but I mean, it's a, it's just a two point card at the end of the day. It, it can sometimes get awkward. So you kind of have to make the decision on if you will just want to use Drowner to move a lesser engine, but you can still deny a lot of points. Not to mention you can start triggering Thrive with it. Or if you want to really save it for a big power swing move with the Elder Bear by preventing Defending its ability from going. So Drowner can be a bit of a bipolar card in this deck. Uh, next we got Indriga Larvas. Indriga Larvas are Larvas. They do what they do. They do their thing. Two noon rates of course. We want that high power bronze. Good backup for the ghoul in case Griffin's not available. So we got Necker Warrior, two Bruxas, and a Necker to sort of finish off our Thrive package. Uh, so this deck, honestly, I just enjoy Fruits of Isketh, and I honestly, I was kind of proud that I made changes like this onto this deck. Uh, I guess you'll see it reflected on the games that are coming up, and uh, yeah, so other than that, if you guys did enjoy this gameplay, please leave it a like if you guys did make it to the end of the video. Um, comment any changes you guys would like to make, of course, and subscribe for more Gwent content, and perhaps some other content. I mean, we'll see. I mean, I'm going to do like a big, not a big announcement, but an announcement come Master Mirror Expansion with sort of regards to what's going to happen to the channel and all that. But uh, anyway, let's send you guys over to some gameplay. And of course, be sure to hit up my Discord, actually. Link will always be in the de description below, as well as all my other media sites, social media sites. And uh, yeah, let's get straight into some Gwent. Ooh, jackpot. I do have some tech cards, so that's not the worst. We can do this combo, but I know I know he rocks poison, but I mean that's what we have caretaker for, I guess. I don't hate this hand. I can dip eager. Oh crap. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, literally anything but Oswald. Actually, anything but Oswald or Necromancy would have been fine, but. Alright, cool. We'll start off with the larva per usual. And then we'll fruit up. We'll fruit it up. So he goes straight to the Sly Seductress, huh? Alright, alright. That's fine. Um, I may play... I actually may play the Weavis Incantation early here. Yeah, I may just do that. Let's do it. I mean, I could also play Katakan, but I'm not sure. Because I feel like Katakan's a pretty valuable card. I don't know if, it's, if I want to get rid of it, though. Yeah, I'm gonna consume Griffin. I may play Katakan. If I play Katakan first, he might, he might opt to pass, though. Nah, I'm gonna try and reserve Katakan if I can, I think. That might be the best solution here. Oh, shoot. Okay. Oh, well. That stuff happens. Nothing you can do about it, unfortunately. So he plays both Seductresses early. Huh. I actually don't like that all my golds are here. I may actually have to play this other larva. I actually don't mind this because I can get Necromancy. Oh, I have to draw into Necromancy. That's the thing. Yeah, I'd have to draw into the Necromancy. That's the one thing with getting rid of Naglfar is now I it's hard for me to get into Necromancy is the problem. Uh, he, he, if I didn't have round control, I think it'd be better. Actually, you know what? Let's just play Katsukan then, I think. Yeah, let's just play Katsukan. It's fine. It's fine. This stuff happens. I mean, I'm going to be out-thriving him by a lot, but the problem is I've also had to play a lot of... i played more gold cards than him, that's for sure. He's yet to commit gold cards, which can get scary, I think. I have to save this for Brasodi, for the for the Uwald Brasadi, so that's an issue. Uh, we may just get a regular Noon Wraith from this, or we could get that other Griffin. That would just mean that our chances of drawing, like, like better cards is higher, I think. Yeah. I don't hate that idea, actually. It's either Flutter or Griffin. Let's go Griffin, actually. 
since it procs the Katakan. It's a pretty good, yeah, it's pretty good actually. Nothing I can do about this unfortunately, but it's okay. Is this Graydon? So that's 19 points of swing right there, which is a lot. It's a lot. So 18 points down is pretty big. I could pass if I wanted to here. I think I may have to just because of the cards I have in my hand. They're not that good. The problem is we put him in a long round situation, which could actually put us in a bit of trouble. He hasn't played any poisons yet. I'm wondering if he has poison. But I'm going to pass here. Is that Morios? That might be Morios. For... Oh wait, no, Morios isn't gonna be enough. Yeah, Morios won't be enough here. Okay, so he's definitely gonna guarantee the long run, that's for sure. Okay. Fair enough, I mean, it is what it is. But I mean, getting Caleb Manga out of him was pretty good though. He has to use 3 coins from his Street Urchins, so there's no way he's going to be able to preserve, so... So what's my passing card going to be? I mean, if I can get a Necro Warrior or a Noon Wraith, that would be, be pretty good, I think. Okay, Noon Wraith will be my passing play then. Uh, Mata draws us Necromancy. I might return Egern. Okay, Parasite. Parasite might be decent here, but I mean, regardless of what I do, I'm pa I'm gonna play Noon Wraith. So you are not going to play on, are you? Yeah, I didn't think so. Oh, the problem is though, if he has. If he has freaking what's his face? Hmm. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So I don't really want to draw anymore. I think we have a, we have a really good amount of thrive units here. And we have Caretaker in case he does play Azar Javed first, so... The only, the only bad news about this is I have to set up quite a bit. I need to play Indraga Larva, then I need to Necromancy, and then I can start with the fun. I may actually have to play Caretaker, because I think he's... Yeah, this is Azar Javed first, for sure. Yeah. It only makes sense, you know? Only makes sense. Protects the back row, huh? Alright. Well, Brooks up first before we play the, the Caretaker, actually. I want to see what he's doing with this. Ah, Vincy. That, that explains what he was doing there. Uh, I can... Actually, that might be my Drowner target. Yeah, that might actually be my Drowner target. I could also potentially lock it as well. I do have a lock. So I, I have counters to this. Preferably, I'd like to save the Drowner for Uwald. Actually, now I have to decide who's the bigger threat, Uwald or Bincy. I think Bincy's the bigger threat. I think I have to move her. Yeah, I, I actually think, I genuinely think Bincy's the bigger threat here. Okay, so that's just a pure setup card. Yeah, we have to move Bincy for sure. So I do have to caretake her here regardless. That's fine. And then next turn we're gonna actually we're actually gonna move Bincy. 
And I think we can just we can just parasite um you Walt just because that he's not getting he's not gonna get power, so oh, that's fine. I don't care if he destroys it. If, he, if this is Bersoldi, then that's probably our lock. No, yeah, yeah, we're gonna lock it first, and then if he kills it, it's Parasite, right? Yeah. Or do we just Parasite, maybe? Maybe we just go straight to the Parasite, you know? Yeah. Just gonna Parasite it. The problem is he still has all these coins, so like he can he could have saved all of his like strong gold cards for the end, like Savola, Louisa, Philippa, etc. So Actually if he if he somehow if if he for some reason does have a Louisa, then I'm just gonna Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna what do, what do you call it? I don't even know that I could even call that. What are we gonna do? I can't even think anymore. If he has Louisa, I'll lock it, that's what I was gonna say. That might be my lock, but I'm not gonna do it now. Oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it now, actually. I'm gonna play this first. Yeah, but that is- I think that is gonna be my lock. But if he somehow kept Purify all the way here to the end, then I'm like, yeah, that's gonna be sad for me. <laughs> oh, well, that's fine. Another Slander, wow. Oh, he's- I think he has the bounty quest then, huh? So, I'm a- yeah, so I'm assuming he doesn't have- he doesn't run poison, right? He must be running bounty. It's all bounty for him then. Wow, you have necromancy? Really? Alright. I mean, I guess that makes sense. You kind of value your uh, witch hunters that way then? Which isn't so bad, I think, so... It's fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and play Mata here. I think this is Savola, then. I think this is Savola. I may have just given him another engine. Yeah, shoot! I shouldn't have done that! <laughs> I messed up there, I should not- I- I mean, I gave him another engine, I should have just breaked with this. Oh, that's bad. So this last card is still the bullet, right? Yeah, you have to inflict- You have to inflict as much bleed as you possibly can, friend. I'm gonna just bank on the fact that this last card is Savola, so... Yeah, I'm just gonna bank. I'm just gonna bank on the fact that his last card is Savola. Oh, it was more real. Okay, all right. I mean, that's fine. I'm just again. I'm I'm just too far ahead. I think. Pathetic. Just like what he says. It's pathetic. <laughs> And I will take my Oswald we'll right back for some points, so... Okay. 
So I want to get rid of these two, for sure. Yeah, I think this is better. For the third one, probably a griffin. Yeah, now that I see a caretaker, it might not be a necessary card here. So he'll probably start off with his own Larvas, because that's usually the play. I think the key here for me is that I just need to... I was gonna go Bruxa, but I guess that ain't happening. <laughs> so I need to main my I need to I need to maintain my points here. I need to maintain my points here. That's looking like a good parasite, not gonna lie. That might be my parasite target. I know I'm playing parasite early here. Oh but the problem is that's that's gonna be another setup for Frightener. Now nah, I don't mind him getting this as long as like my thrives outnumber his. So I, I'm okay with this actually. I don't mind this. I don't mind this play. I'll let him destroy his own units. Now I may play Weavis and eat the Griffin. Yeah, I may just do that, actually. Too bad I can't lock an artifact. That'd be pretty clutch if I could. I could lock this and make it really awkward for him, potentially. I really could lock this. Just, just wondering if I actually want to. Because it, it, there's, there could be a chance that he draws this. Ooh, you know what? What if I make him draw Foglet with Mata? That'd be pretty clutch, no? So... I really want to play Derogare. But I feel like... Nah, but I think Drag Race is too valuable. I'm just, I'm just playing Weavis. I don't know, like, when you get a potential chance of um, locking something that could tutor a card out, especially if they don't play the consume first, you can really punish them with that, you know? We'll, we'll see what happens. If he chooses to play another Death Wish unit for a setup, then I'm gonna lock that Foglet. Yeah, if if he's if this is what he's doing, then I'm definitely locking the Foglet. Because I feel like if he just plays any other Death Wish unit, it's he's just gonna play Overwhelming Hunger on it. So it, it, like it makes no sense, right? It's too slow. So I'd rather make things awkward for him by doing that. Because if I if I play Mata and I force him to draw the Foglet, then you know it's it's only three points for him. So I'd rather have I'd rather take that chance than. Because he can obviously play Overwhelming Hunger anytime. Yeah, that ain't working anymore, bud. Sorry. <laughs> nice try, though. I'm debating on passing here. I could also play... I can play Egern, actually. I, wouldn't, I don't have a problem with playing Egern here. Because I still have Goliath. I still have another powerhouse, so... I could even play Caretaker. I don't think he's gonna commit any sort of status to me. Yeah, I can play Caretaker. I am very far ahead. Even if even if he does get his... He might play Egon here, right, actually? I haven't seen a deck play Ice Troll in a long while. Okay, so that's my Parasite target, that's for sure. I wonder if... There's also a possibility that he could be Reverse Swarm, so I think the shorter the round for me, the better. So... I'm actually gonna keep playing here. Because there's a chance he could be Reverse Swarm. Reverse Swarm has been used in this... Oh, he's gonna eat it. Okay, that makes sense. Unfortunately, I'm still ahead, so... I'm pretty sure you can be eaten from the graveyard, no? How does it be 14 points here? 
e Egren will tie it, right? But yeah, how does how does he beat 14 points here? Nah, but I don't want to give him round control though. Yeah, it's better for me if I get round control, so I'll just do this. Yeah, he 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 has to pass. He's um he's um, he's so far behind. Using the raw gray might have seemed weak on that foglet, but I mean. Oh wow. Okay. That's a pass then. So I'm technically at. Uh. Oh, okay, that's fine. Oh yeah, cause he, he yeah he definitely won then. Okay, cool. I mean, we got Keltalos out of him, which is pretty good, so we don't need to worry about a short round from him. Uh, even if he Osrolls my card, I can I should be able to target. Cannot be manually target. So I, does that mean I can't Osroll that? That would suck. I'm gonna keep this. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it. I'm just gonna Royal Decree like a Bronze or something if he passes. I have already played in Drago Larva, right? Yeah. So I'm just gonna Royal Decree like a Bronze card or something. Probably uh, a Noon Wraith? Or a Necker. I, I actually could just. I'm just gonna Royal Decree that Necker. Yeah. It's a good throwaway card, no? So the problem is here, if he if he is Karanthir Maruna, then that's gonna suck for me. Yeah, if he because if he plays double Maruna, then he's gonna steal both my Andriga larvas, and it's like that's just gonna make my life a freaking nightmare. <laughs> Drowner we'll have to keep actually. We'll have to keep the Drowner. Uh Matza gets us necromancy, so I think I'm gonna be, I'm gonna keep this. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this actually. I have a feeling he's gonna be Maruna. I really have that feeling. He's he's Karanthir Maruna and he's gonna steal my Andrega Larva and it's like, just no point. But I mean, I kind of have to commit to this because I already have committed, so it's whatever. There's also a chance that he steals my fruit. Oh, you know what I could have done? I actually should have started with Katakan instead. Oh, that's not... Oh, that's bad. Oh, hello. I mean, I have Drowner, so I have a tech card for you. I do have a tech card for you. Now, unless he's playing Ruin, then it's like there's no point. If he is Ruin, then it doesn't. It's no. It's nothing. Then I may play Mata. Actually, I should be playing Mata. Ah, Rot Fiend. Oh, please hit the Griffin. Oh, basically, we're gonna kill one of my larvas. Yeah, I was like the upper. The chances are just too high. Also, the Drowner doesn't mean anything here. Then okay, that's fine. This is not good though. Oh, I hope that's the Foglet. I hope I gave him the Foglet. That's like three points there that he can't really use. I may have to... Uh, now I may actually have to play the... The Drowner first here. He's putting all of his... Po relying on this lizard right here. Is it worth moving the the slizzard? Nah, we'll just necromancy. It doesn't matter. The fact that he hasn't played Maroon yet is kind of scary. If he even has it, of course. But this is Karen Thier. It has to be, and it has to be the Maruna. Oh, it's Osril. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I might as well be the Drowner now. Yeah. Why isn't he playing his Maruna yet? That's so strange. If he doesn't, I, if he doesn't have it, then good. But I 
Doesn't matter who I move, actually. It really doesn't. Noonwraith? Okay. What is this overwhelming hunger? What does he have? He has so much... So I am starting to catch up, which is good, so... There's also a chance that he steals the Ekimara, which would be pretty good for me as well, so... He has so much consume, what, what death wishes could he possibly have left, you know what I mean? Like, these are- this is literally just gonna be six straight up points, so... So I'm gonna be... I'm just gonna eat... I'm probably just gonna eat his Caldwell or something. Oh, I can't target... Oh, immunity! Oh yeah, of course. Why would immunity work in the graveyard? It makes this make any sense. <laughs> so I don't know what this last card is. Um, yeah, I don't know. So he's technically at sixty-six. So he needs to beat seven points technically. Yeah. So he needs to beat seven points. If he beats seven points, he wins. Okay. So whatever that is, it's not a. He probably it's probably a goal yet or something though. Or it could be a freaking uh, Igni. Or not Igni. Um. Oh, yeah, that's not enough. <laughs> it's not enough. This guy overloaded his consumes for no reason. I don't understand why he did that.